hello everyone and welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to be focusing on actually getting this fission reactor working in the last video we basically built this as well as the boiler and the industrial turbine now you may notice something different about our boiler it has water in it i'm going to explain how we got that water in a bit over here you can also see that there's a lot of cables and some things going on over here with our thermal evaporation plants well to begin with i first laid down six electric pumps underneath down here and gave them all speed maximum speed upgrades and that's pumped into a, i believe it's the ultimate yeah the ultimate mechanical pipes and well one we have an ender tank that's a water ender tank there as well as an advanced black hole tank that's simply there for the, there for the sole purpose of collecting and being a buffer zone for water and that's pumping the water as well into our thermal evaporation plants now if you take a look all the way to the top here now i know it's a little bit loud so i actually won't fly up too much but you see each of our advanced solar panels that are up there and the reason why we place them with the green ring basically on the outside is so that way we can tap into the power that each of those things produce and that power is brought down into this resistive heater over here and this resistive heater basically is piped in to each of our thermal evaporation plants and well if we click on it we can see you know how much heat is actually being produced how much heat is being produced and how much power is actually being consumed now if we take a look over here into each of our thermal evaporation plants you can see the temperature and well in this case the water is pretty low but actually in both of their cases the water is pretty low and that's free that's actually there for a reason so the reason why the water is low is because it's constantly going to be producing brine and that brine is actually going to be stored right here in this advanced black hole tank which which you can see is a pretty large buffer zone so i've also put another ender tank here and connected it so that's where the advanced black hole tank is actually pumping out brine into this you know little ender tank here so that's where we can wirelessly transfer it to any other source that may need brine now you may be asking why do why did i even build this or why do we even need brine well to cool this this fission reactor take a look this here yeah. so we can actually cool this with sodium or we can cool this with water and i got water into this by simply taking that one of the same advanced black hole tanks over there and just connecting it on this side right here oh let me just hop up onto this mechanical pipe and i was able to pump in basically the maximum amount of water that this tank needs which is five million millibuckets so this that one wasn't too hard but to fill this up with sodium that's the task that we have to basically do today as well as get this fuel tank completely filled up now why sodium now to note you can actually you know basically give this water instead and skip this entire boiler process here so this way it'll just be the fission reactor and the industrial turbine which does you know it would save you a lot of time but this is the most efficient way that you can actually utilize this fission reactor so that's why i'm just going jumping ahead and just doing the sodium reactor version now in addition like i said in addition to the sodium we're actually going to also need to get this fission fuel actually produced which i actually conveniently have saved right here and to do that one we're going to need this isotropic centrifuge and then we're going to need uranium hexafluoride then we're also going to need some in a chemical infuser we're going to need to comply in hydrofluor hydrofluoric acid and uranium oxide now to get the uranium oxide you just need a chemical oxidizer and some yellow cake uranium and that's going to give us that which you know doesn't seem that bad so let's see where was i again in this okay so now if we could take a look at for the hydrofluoric acid we're going to need sulfuric acid and fluoride in order to get that in a chemical dissolution chamber and then to get that sulfuric acid we need water vapor which you can get by deconcentrating the water if i'm not mistaken yep uh let me go let's go back through these processes 
Right, so that's a water vapor. Now to get the sulfur trioxide, you're going to need oxygen, which you can get from basically splitting, um, from using an electrolytic separator on water. And you can get, and you need to get sulfur dioxide. And to get the sulfur dioxide, you need, you can use a chemical oxidizer and sulfur dust in order to get the sulfur dioxide. Yeah, that's the only way. So we're going to set up the fuel in a little bit. But firstly, I'm going to first show off how we actually get the sodium. Now, to get the sodium is actually pretty simple. So if we search up sodium. You can see that brine that we were getting from our thermal evaporation plants over there. If you pump it into an electrolytic separator, it's going to separate it into sodium and to chlorine. Which, well, that's kind of use useful to us. Above, I'm actually storing this, the chlorine in case I ever have a need for it. Uh, but for now, I only have one electrolytic separator working. And, well, this isn't going to cut it. So I think it's best that I actually fix this setup and get me some more pipes working in this thing. So this way we can actually produce a little bit more sodium. So I'm going to probably do, I don't know, three maybe electrolytic separators total. So let's see. A separator so let's do two more electrolytic separators let's actually do at mechanism okay so i'm going to need gonna need some of these cables gonna need these pressurized tubes and mechanical pipes as well where is the speed upgrade speed so let's do 16 of you Ah, uh, you're good on that for now. I am going to have to be very cautious of our melon slices. Because we're kind of running low on those. Not really low low, but we're actually getting to a good bit of it. From our, I think it was 11,000 or 13,000 of this we had. We're down to like 5,000. So yeah, that's pretty much going down quickly. Probably should also start planting that again. Um, garage. Close that. Okay, so let's get the speed upgrades. Where is my electrolytic separators? One, two. Oh, I should get a configuration card. Give me that. All right, now let's head back over. I'm not going to need that. Give me this. Okay. Let's move this. Because this is a little too slow for my liking. Give me that. Thank. Okay. So let's move. Let's put down my electrolytic separators. Pull. I put it here, one, two, three. So this side gives us enough space to deal with the waste. We're not really gonna be walking in between. So this should work. Set this wind power, energy, and that's on. Okay, let's get these universal cables connected like so let's fill this in oh. like that now let's get this tank set up are you gonna connect no you're not good and um, let's get mechanical pipes connected like that let's see this okay so we need to go into gases. Now, previously I had that set to the top. I actually want this set to the front. And I want our blue to be the top. Okay. So if I take this, then that pressurized tubes. Okay. Why did you not connect to the top? Mm, 
practice and give me that we're actually gonna put that there okay so now if i take the configuration card ah, give me that put to that and that so now i should be able to just go hop on That should work there. All right. So now we just need to extract. Make sure, okay, there, that's the sodium going in. Nice. Unfortunately, I can't really see how much this is breaching, but that's fine. So now, let's, oh. Right, I forgot to sort out one thing. Okay, let me get my pressurized tubes out again. I'm gonna connect that and that. So now all of that gas is actually gonna be placed into here on each of them. So each of these have full, well, those two have full bind. This is full bind. Do you have any upgrades? Okay, you're one of the new boys. So we're gonna come here. I'm gonna click into you and give you that another new one how about you okay no so now we have three of those things actually fueling oh now i can finally can i even zoom into that no i can't but now i can finally see the sodium doing something okay so i'm gonna quickly sleep and then i'm gonna come back with the setup well the machines built for actually generating the fissile fuel, which is probably going to have to go right over here next to our thermal evaporation plant. So I'll be back then. So now that we have, you know, this entire thing functioning in the back here now, creating the sodium, I mean, we need to focus on generating the fuel that this machine, that the fission reactor is actually going to be needing. So to do that, let's go through the fissile fuel here, how we actually create it. So you're going to need a uh, isotopic centrifuge, which hmm, relatively simple to get some lead, ultimate control circuit, and a basic chemical tank. Okay, seems simple. Now this uses uranium hexafluoride. Okay, how do we get that? We need a chemical infuser, which seems relatively simple. And well, this uses hydrofluoric acid and uranium oxide. Okay, how do you get each of these things? So let's try start off with the uranium oxide. We're going to need a chemical oxidizer. Okay, how do we get that? Hmm, relatively simple. I don't think I've messed around with doing the dynamic tank, but it's really simple to make a dynamic tank, so it's not that big of a deal. And um, everything else is pretty simple. This personal chest doesn't require that much. It's just the most that it requires is, is the steel. But that's about it and everything else seems relatively straightforward and simple let's go to the hydrofluoric acid now to get the hydrofluoric acid one we need a chemical dissolution chamber which well we take a look this is kind of complicated in the sense that it needs four pieces of refined obsidian ingot i think that's the most expensive one that you would have to create if i'm not mistaken yeah because you need refined obsidian dust and to get that you need to get obsidian dust and to get that you need to go and put that inside an enrichment chamber, uh, a piece of obsidian inside of an enrichment chamber. So it's a little bit of a process to get that, but mm, it's definitely doable with refined storage. But make your life a little bit easier. This is where we are. Yeah. So this, even though it's it's a bit of a process, but shouldn't be a challenge at this point. Um, the ultimate control circuit's pretty easy as well. Um, still casing. Mm, simple and two basic chemical tanks okay so not that complicated um did i click on the wrong thing yeah all right so we need to combine the sulfuric acid with a fluoride piece in order to get, uh, give us some hydrochloric acid okay and to get that we need another chemical infuser okay and then this one we're going to put down water vapor and sulfur trioxide now the water vapor you can get by you deconcentrating in a O3 condensator you um you deconcentrate water and it's going to give you the water vapor okay um 
simple enough. And to get the sulfur trioxide now. Okay. We need another chemical infuser. And this is going to use utilize water. Well, oxygen, sorry. Which we know we can get the oxygen from an electrolytic separator that is separating out hydrogen and oxygen from water. So simple. And to get the sulfur dioxide that we need here to make the sulfur trioxide, we need to get ourselves a chemical oxidizer and some sulf some sulfur dust. So we have quite a bit of machines books to set up. In fact, I actually have the amount of machines that you'll actually need to set up right here. So let me just put this in order so I can actually give you a tally of how much you'll actually need. So you'll need three chemical infusers, one electrolytic separator, two chemical oxidizers, one chemical dissolution chamber, one O3 condensator, and one isotopic centrifuge. Now, in order for this to actually function wirelessly, I'm going to utilize the refined storage wireless system. I have a transmitter already put down inside our main base, and right here we have the network receiver. As well as we have four exporters. I crafted four. You may, I believe, your maximum are going to need only three, if I'm not mistaken. But we have four in the event that, you know, we need it for something else. And you're going to need a miscellaneous amount of pipes, depending on how you choose to connect this. I also have a quantum entangler porter just for us to get power. But you can choose to get power in however you choose. Okay, let's get down to actually placing down some of these blocks. So let's start off with, oh, um, where is my electrolytic separator? Give me that. And where is the O3 condensator? Okay. So, uh, I should have moved this around, you know. Move this. All right. So first things first, we're going to set down the electrolytic separator right there. And then the O3 condensator right here. Switch the mode to deconcentrating. Uh, let me get a mechanical pipe quickly. Connect that there. Okay. So, if we check uh, where is it the uses for oxygen, we can see that in a chemical infuser, combining oxygen with sulfur dioxide gives us the sulfur trioxide. And so, therefore, we need to put down a chemical infuser, which we have right here. Now I'm going to give it one block up, and we're going to put the chemical infuser right there. Now if we go back in this, we can check the recipe for the sulfur dioxide, we see that we need a chemical oxidizer. So, that's exactly what we're going to put down. One chemical oxidizer, right here. Okay, check back the recipes. So with the sulfur trioxide, now we can click the uses of this. And we can see that we need yet another chemical infuser, and that's going to utilize the water vapor and all well, the sulfur trioxide that this machine is going to be providing. So if we come here with a chemical infuser, it's going to get the water vapor from our Ochi condensator, as well as the sulfur trioxide from this chemical infuser into this one. So now, if we have the, the sulfur trioxide, and the water vapor it's going to give us that sulfuric acid so if we click the, to find out the uses of that we can see that if we put that put that sulfuric acid inside of a chemical dissolution chamber with the fluoride it's going to give us the hydrofluoric acid so that's exactly what you need to put down next the chemical dissolution chamber so that's going to come right here and last step after this that's going to give us the hydrofluoric acid which we can check the uses Need another chemical infuser to create the uranium hexafluoride. So, well, we can actually put that right there. And if we check back, where is that? So we have the hydrofluoric acid already in the machine for that. And right. Yeah. And then well, the uranium oxide is where we have to put down, and then that we know is a chemical oxidizer to give us the yellow cake. So we have one last chemical oxidizer. That's going to go right there. So now this machine block, if I'm not mistaken, uses of the hydrofluoric acid. Yep, that's going to give us that and the uses of this. So the last block that we need to place down here now 
is our isotropic centrifuge. Okay. So now we're going to get out those exporters. We're going to put one here, one here, and one on top of this one. Actually, let me put these on top. Like this. One, like so. Um, hmm. We we'll just use this cables as a bit of a base for this. Let's hop up and put our receiver. Mm. Let's come back on top of this now. Attach these cables like so. Oh wait, take that, take that, I'm gonna need these cables, alright, so now that's connected, yeah, okay, let's start connecting the pipes now, so let's get the, don't need, I don't need logistic, mechanical, you can switch out, okay, so we have the pressurized tube, now we know that this is gonna provide, we enter this, we want the first one I believe is actually going to be hydrogen and oxygen so we need to configure this properly so we want to take that off and we want to come out of the front we want output 2 which we know is oxygen and we're going to set this to dumping the hydrogen because we're not utilizing it we want that on okay if we go into our chemical infuser we go into the gases tab we need to actually configure this properly now so oxygen, we want that to be on the right slot, on the left slot, and the chemical and the sulfur dioxide on this slot. Okay, so red, we want red to be in the back. Disconnect this. Disconnect that for now. And the sulfur dioxide is going to be on the right, which is where we have this, the chemical oxidizer. We can put that there. So that says this one's this machine perfectly set up to produce the sulfur dioxide. We want that. To actually be ejected the left side like so okay so now in this lock now we know the sulfur trioxide is going to be coming in on the right and the water vapor okay so let me check it's back okay, red has to be on this side disconnect this it's going to come in from there and the second input, move that. Second, oh no, I'm setting this up well. Energy gases, that's what I meant to click on, my bad. Okay, um, this side, we want the red here, disconnect, disconnect. We want the back to be our second one. Check, check back. All right, the water vapor is going to come from the back. Sulfur trioxide coming in correctly. We want our output to be front, like so. So now, if we come by the O3, um, the um, the Ochi condensator, we set this up, disconnect that. We have our output coming out to the front, so that's going to produce the water vapor. Go into this, soft dioxide is going to come into that. This needs to go forward, as I already configured this, correct? Yes, I did. Now in our chemical solution chamber, this is the item one. We need to actually tell it, well, input is already on top, which is fine. The gases, all right, yeah, that's basically good. So it's going to output, did I put the right, eject on for gases? Now this one. What was it again for this step? Using the sulfur trioxide. Wait. Got what I was going inside this one. Oops. Right, hydrofluoric acid, right. Alright, so the hydrofluoric acid. Okay, so this is actually coming on the right side. So gases, you know. You to connect there, you're gonna connect there, and you're gonna output to the front, okay? Now you, we need to tell you how to sort yourself out. 
we're going to output that on the left side and inject this on um i should tell it where to get its input all right its input is coming in from the top okay i'm going to connect you here now oh, isotrophic centrifuge what uh nope it doesn't really matter with that um we want our okay our input set to the back and our output could be to the front okay okay i think that's actually it set up if i'm not mistaken yeah so that's all the cables so now we need to get each of these machines power Ooh, one thing i did not think about when i placed this was the building underneath it Ooh. That might be an issue. So we're just going to have to try to work around that. Let's see what we can do with it. So that's the only thing left powering this entire thing. Let's hop over here. Break these thing. Okay. So now I should be able to see. Uh, yeah, I sh more or less am. Actually, I now realize I already have an entangle portal over here. So you know what? Let's actually use this one. Where is our cables? Our universal cables. Okay. Let's change this jet back to hover mode. Let's go up with this. So we're going to cross. Oh. So that okay, it's already started to do its thing. Let's break this. And okay. wait, what? Oh, wrong cable. Thought it was on. Let me move that out before I mix that up again to get power not anything else like so water vapor is coming on the right side correct oh no up here Oop. oh no I'm out of gas. Okay. That explained why I fell. I was wondering why my jetpack wasn't working. Let's climb back up. Alright, so we just need to finish running the power to these boys. Like so. Think you should be connected there now? Yep. Now we can just cover this back up. You don't have power. You're going to need power. Okay. So I believe that's everyone for power. Yeah, now these might actually drain the system a bit. In fact, they're not able to actually truly be able to run. Okay, so I'm going to go get me a network card. Refill my jetpack and wait till it's daytime and i'll be back then okay so it's daytime i've already put the network card that we needed to make this work into our base over there into the corresponding transmitter that is so now we need to actually you know basically configure this thing to actually do work because right now why are you oh yeah you're just trying to fill a pipe okay so now we need to actually start configuring each of these you know exporters to do something so we're gonna put we, you're gonna need three crafting upgrades now this one you're gonna need to teach you're gonna need to teach your system how to make the fluoride and if you click click on in the jei because we don't i don't have any right now the best way to do it use the fluoride cluster the fluoride ore and actually it's gonna give you six fluoride so why not one piece is going to give you six so might as well utilize it this way 
on this way because of the crafting upgrade it's actually going to produce as much as it needs to fill this up with 64 it's just the only thing is every other step we actually need to configure the various crafting upgrades in order for this thing to actually start get start working so you actually no let's do you because i know you you are the uranium oxide and you need to do the yellow cake so let's search that up um yellow cake so again you're going to want to teach your system how to make this yellow cake uranium which uh, i believe i had taught my system how to do this already yeah so it's going to utilize the uranium so it's actually two step for this one so you're going to need to teach your system how to make the uranium ingots and then utilize that those uranium ingots to produce this yellow cake uranium so we're going to put a crafting upgrade here and we're going to put the yellow grab the yellow cake and put it there and there we go so it's going to start doing its thing and it's going to start automatically producing this yellow cake uranium and as well because i've taught my system how to make the uranium ingots it's going to start all those things are going to start firing off in the base now for this one i believe you need the sulfur sulfur dust if i'm not mistaken Right, so we can either use the sulfur with the earth charge to create the sulfur dust. You can use the essence, but I'm going to utilize another injection, the crusher, because we have like 41,000 sulfur crystals from sluicing. So yeah, I'm just going to use this, the crusher, to actually produce the sulfur dust. I already set up that pattern back there. So we're going to put the crafting upgrade, and we're going to drag this right there. So now you're going to start exporting sulfur dust. Yeah, so now it's going to get kind of loud. And you can kind of see everything's starting to <laughs> do its thing, sulfuric acid. Ah, uh, you're empty right now. But you're getting the sulfuric acid. You're getting something that you automatically pushed out here. You're getting the, hy um, the hydrofluoric acid for us. We have the uranium oxide. And that's producing the uranium hexafluoride. And that's being injected into this bad boy over here. And converting it into fissile fuel. So the entire system here is going to be fully automated. Now, do I have enough pressurized tubes? I think I do. Let's run this cable um hmm should i okay no way let's actually bring it out how many blocks do i have here one two oh wait no so one two three four five we have five there we have five here okay Bring this like so. Now I do have a plan to actually cover this hole up. Well, I was I now checked back and I realized that this currently does not exist in this mud box so i'm just gonna break these pipes and carry them down whoops i didn't mean to fall come on back up all right there we go let's bring this down i'm gonna need to switch to hover so this way we won't see this because i saw catwalk was in this mud park but i guess not because that would have been nice to just you know cover up this entire hole but i guess we're gonna have to work it like work it like this mess up so okay let me just replace these back okay so now I, this is gonna function now ah, the fun part is we can actually produce um how many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
that's gonna be take off that nine by eight in order to actually produce this so that's 72 yeah that's 72 speed upgrades that we're gonna need for this entire thing to be fully you know optimized in terms of speed but i kind of am skeptical to do that because we're kind of still running on um the melon the biofuel so i probably would do the speed upgrade when this is actually fully operational but you can see we're actually producing the official fuel i'm gonna have to keep on watching this as we to make this go up um, let me just grab this tank here actually it's a little bit easier come on and gimme put that there okay so let me check something now I think I'm going to have to actually. Ah, oh, wait. Nope, wrong thing. Okay, what do I need for this? Okay, we're gonna need a la uh, light gray laser lens. Okay, I'm probably gonna end up doing this to get ourselves some more fluoride ore. But that's actually how you basically create the fuel. That's how you actually get the coolant for this sodium and once these things are you know basically maxed out we can actually turn this bad boy on now the only catch with turning this bad boy on is well we have no way to store this power so that's gonna be a problem so i'm gonna actually let this entire thing just accumulate of scammer and then probably in the next episode, I'm probably going to set up a one more multi-block structure to actually store all of this power that we're going to be generating from this fizzle reactor. Um, that's going to require me to actually make a few more of these things because we're going to need some lithium. But we'll see. So I think that's about it for this episode. All I really covered was, you know, again, the coolant for this thing, which is the sodium. Which, as you can see, we are going to need a lot of. Um, I showed how I explained how you can get water into this and the process for it. Let me actually go. I don't think I actually explained the process. So the coolant, which is sodium in this case, is going to cool down the fission reactor rods, where as they burn through our fissile fuel, and that's going to produce the superheated coolant. And that superheated co sodium is actually going to come across in this pipe right here into our boiler and our bo and it's going to utilize the heat with this with the super with the coils inside there that's going to extract the heat and actually create steam and our sodium is actually going to go up into the pressure dispersers up there cool down and then be sent right back into our system you will need to have some you know provisions for creating access because once even if this is maxed out the pipes themselves if you can see they do have a capacity and they can end up pulling back and as a result you this even if it's maxed out it will deplete it's not an instantaneous change is what i'm trying to say there's going to take a little bit in terms of transmission and loss so you're going to kind of you know need to have a little bit of excess sodium in your lines and once this this now will create heat and this heat is going to create steam it's going to boil this water and that steam is what's actually going to be sent into this turbine through this bottom pipe here going to create the steam this will actually do an animation for us and start spinning and that's going to cool down into the special dispersers and the saturating condensers all the way to the top and oh let me put on back that jet back and from here they're going to connect a well i may actually go through this when i'm actually turning this on and from here from, from the vents in particular you will get the water returning right back into your into your thermal electric boiler i think i have this flipped i need to fix that yeah so i'll probably do a proper correction of those cables in the next video when we actually are ready to turn this on but for now we can actually see how we're utilizing a few of these ports this one here is going to be producing the sodium this one here is going to be handling the introduction of the fissile fuel into our system which is uh, barely moved so it's going to take quite some time so yeah thank you all for watching and take care bye bye now